Hello everyone, in this video I'll show you how to use the Doodle Mosaic Art Photoshop action. So before we get started, let's view a few examples. With this Photoshop action, you need to open your main image and mark your main subject area and then run the action. And after it has finished, you will get something like this. So this is the base uh, effect that you get, this is the default effect that you get. And over this you can add multiple customization, multiple layers, multiple effects. So this is another paper texture added onto the default effect. So in this action pack, you will get five different paper textures uh, provided. This is another paper texture. Let's view another example. This is the main subject. This is the subject area marked. And this is the default effect. And here is an, again the paper texture added on top of the default effect. This one is actually a color effect applied on top of it. After the action has finished running, you will get 10 pre different color effects. You can simply toggle the visibility of those layer icons. This is another color effect. And this is some sort of pop art style color effect, color field. You get another uh, one color for, for the main subject image and another color for the background. You can change the colors uh, to the one you like. This is the base effect, the default mode. Here, uh, the, on top of the main effect, a paper texture is applied and also the paint color is changed. So you can change the paint color to any color you like and turn uh, the black to some other color like blue, red, anything that you want. This is the paper texture and the color effect applied together. pop art style color effect combined with the paper texture. Color effect applied on top of our paper texture. For this one, a paper texture is applied and then the paint color is changed. Here also the pop art style color is applied for the background and white is kept uh, for the main subject. Also one thing I need to mention is that the background doodle pattern has two kinds of pattern. One is heavy, another is light. Here you can see it's partially the light one is exposed from the bottom of the background heavy one. So I'll show you in detail how this uh, you can change these uh, effects and tweak the uh, layer styles once we are on the action. So I'll be using this image. So before we get started, we need to check a few things like our image mode uh, should be RGB and 8 bits per channel should be checked. Then again, click this flyout list and select the panel options. Just add copy to copy layers groups and use default masks and field layers. This both of these checkboxes must be checked. Then your background layer should be a background locked layer. Like if you did some operation like cropping and uh, some other operation which can turn your layer into a non background layer, like this one, layer zero, then you need to turn it to a background locked layer for the action to work properly. To do that, go to layer and select background from layer. Now regarding image size, this, this action works great with the larger images like I have a 1700 by 2400 uh, image and also make sure your resolution is 300. So uh, if it's something uh, other than this, like something smaller, you can change it. The resolution should be 300, you need to change it over here and I'll crank this one up. Let's turn this to this one. You can even increase this one further and you might think that your image will become blurry but this will does not affect your main uh, final effect that you'll get after running the action so feel free to increase your image size and this action works fine gives you the best result with larger images so i'll keep it like this for here and fit the image to the screen and then uh, now let's import the action and the brushes that are provided in the download package. First, to import the action, select Window, Actions, 
click the slab list and select load actions select the total mosaic art photoshop action and click load so this action has two main action like one for the normal image and one for the brighter image if your image is uh, very whitish or very bright then you need to run this one i'll show you an example quickly and after the action has finished running you can add margins around the main subject i've provided here three different types of margin width now to open uh, the brush and the patterns go to edit presets and preset manager from this drop down select brush and select load select total mosaic art brushes and click load here you can see that the brush has been loaded for the patterns from this drop down again select patterns select load and select total mosaic art patterns click load one thing you need to check here which is a must is select this brush and make sure your opacity and flow is set to 100% both of these parameters must be set to 100% for the action to work properly now let's mark our main subject area to do that create a new layer by clicking this new layer icon rename it as subject make sure subject is in lowercase it has to be in lowercase for the action to work properly now I'm selecting the main image and you can use any technique like quick selection pen tool magic wand anything you want to make a selection around your main subject you need not to be extremely precise because doesn't need the final details around the hair and all you can just roughly uh, make a selection and it will work fine okay this one will do now make sure you are selecting the subject layer select any color and fill it so deselect the selection so if you are done with this then you are good to run the action now again make sure you have a good contrasted image and you then you can run the normal action or if you have a very bright image you need to run the second action so select the action and click play it will take some time for the action to finish i'll fast forward from here and get back when it's done so the action has finished running and here is a pop-up message like hello the total mosaic card for shop action has finished rendering now you can make further adjustments and also add paper textures to add paper textures select the guide layer which is this one over here the guide layer is already selected and just drag and drop the textures inside the place paper texture inside this folder which is this one the red folder resize the texture to fill the entire canvas so if you have ran this uh, add margin so it might happen that the paper texture is like covering your own only the image area so you need to just resize it to fill your entire canvas you can also run the add margin action to add a margin around the image if you add a margin after pressing the paper texture make sure to again resize the texture and the additional effects group to fill the entire canvas please refer to the video guide for further details on how to apply the effect so this additional effects show if paper texture is added what it does is it creates a smudged out effect which looks good if a paper texture is placed over here so if a margin is added you need to resize this one I'll show you so let's add a paper texture I'll add this one just drag and drop it make sure you are placing it inside this place, place paper texture inside this folder select your move tool and Resize your paper texture to cover the entire canvas. Now you can show this one, and this will create a smudged out effect around the A border. You can also add a margin. To do that, just select add one of the add margin actions and click play. So as you can see the texture is only covering the image area so I'll select it and right click and free transform and I'll resize it to cover the entire canvas and as I mentioned you need to also resize this, this one 
So again, pre-transforming this one to cover the entire canvas. Now, before we go into the uh, layers and folders which are generated over here, I want to quickly show you how, what difference it makes for the second action. So to do that, let's uh, select another image. Let's take this one and quickly mark the subject area. Fill it with a color. I'll first run the first action and then I'll run the second one to show you the differences. Okay, so it's done. I'll quickly merge this one and rename it as uh, normal. Now I'll run the second action. So it's also done. And let's view the differences. So as you can see, uh, the image was pretty bright. So the normal one produces lesser detailed image. So for this one, the second action is giving us a better result. So use the second action if you have a very bright image or if you have a good contrast or good balance image then use the normal action. Okay now let's go into details about the layers and the folders that are generated over here. So I'll hide this smudge effect for now and also the paper texture. Let me quickly zoom and show you the details. Okay, so here we have the BG elements, the background elements. This is the base white, the main base of the whole canvas, and this is the background pattern standard. This is the heavy fill, and here we have the background pattern light. So you can toggle this one pretty easily by switching these eye icons. Here we also have background pattern light partial. So what it does is it creates the light pattern around the image only. So we'll keep the heavy pattern, the standard pattern for now. Now this, this is the image element. This is the main bulk of the image. This is the image base white. If you hide this one, the background pattern will be visible through the image. Then we have hatching one. These are the different hatching layers. So to like, if you feel that you need to tone down these hatchings a bit, then you can hide this layer, hatching two, hide to reveal hatching two partial. And this will reveal this one. As you can see, it's a toned down version of the hatching. If you prefer this one, you can keep it or you can hide this one. I'll keep it for now. And then we have the shadows, which makes the bulk of the dark areas. Then we have the image line elements. We have a thicker line element. Then we have the image outline and we have an image outline hatching. Next we have additional elements and the color. Here we have the grid showing through through the image in some places. Then we have the pen color adjustment layer. You can double click and change the color. And you have the PG base color and the image base color, which you can combine to give the pop art kind of style. Okay, so here we have the 10 predefined color effects. You can simply show them.
Next is the paper texture addition layer. Here you can constantly keep adding multiple paper texture, selecting this layer. Let's add a few more and show you how it looks. Let's add one more. So you can experiment and try to get the look that you want. I'll keep this one visible. And then we have additional effects, which creates the smudged area. You can also tone down the opacity if you feel it's too harsh. Next we have the overall adjustments. This is overall levels. overall brightness and contrast, overall curves, you can invert the image with one click. Next we have overall gradient map, you can use your own custom gradient map to add a overall color effect. Next we have an overall gradient field. You can change the gradient style and you can change the angle and the scale and you can also change the blending mode. So tweaking the blending mode of this gradient field or the color field creates unique effects. Now you have the overall solid color field. So you can simply delete this effect to get your main image back and here we have our margin layer created be sure to run this margin action after you have run the main action so this is all for the doodle mosaic art photoshop action hope you like it see you soon